and it's so dis- it's so disturbing because it's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an accurate account of how this all happened, and it's just it makes you so uncomfortable to think that there's people in the world that would do what the Sackler family did. Do you know anyone who's who's yes. gone down from from opioids? Quite Roxy? a few. Yeah, same quite here. a few people. Um, you know, when uh, when they first came to me uh, and asked me if I was interested, my buddy Eric Newman, who who put the whole thing together, uh, you know, said, "You want to do something about the Sacklers? Do you know who the Sacklers are?" And I did. I knew they were the you know family behind OxyContin. Uh, and he said, "Are you interested?" And I, I started thinking. And I started counting the people I know who've died or whose kids have died uh, because of Oxycontin and opioids. And I, I quickly got off of both fingers, you know. And then I, I started thinking about um, some of my heroes, my art, my artistic heroes, um, Chris Cornell, Tom Petty. And, like, one of my big heroes was Prince. I was a yeah. huge, huge Prince fan. I, I went to school in Minneapolis when he was coming up. Uh, I was an extra in Purple Rain back in the day, you know, wow. First Avenue in, in Minneapolis. And, you know, those three guys, when, when Prince died, you know, yeah. Prince was, he was su- had such a, uh, he was legendary for his work ethic and his lifestyle, with no alcohol, and no swearing, and just incredible work ethic. Yeah. And the fact that OxyContin got him. Yeah. And that that really kind of fucked with me. So when they came to me and, you know, started, talking to me about doing something about the Sacklers, I was like, yeah, I'm all in. Um, and the more I dug into it, and the more experts and writers who have been covering this uh, epidemic for so long, the more I learned. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily the biggest conspiracy guy of all time. I, I do. Uh, I'll, if the proof's there, uh, I'm, I'm down. But the more I learned about the Sacklers and how they maneuvered what is essentially just heroin in like a little M&M pill, you know, how they were so artful and so good at manipulating the system. Uh, I was shocked and I I was all in on painkiller. Well, I'm glad you were all in because people need to know this story and a lot of people aren't going to watch a documentary and, you know, they're not going to read about it. This is a very entertaining show that shows accurately how this went down and you know, there's a, there's a moment, and I don't want to give too much away, but there's this one moment where this ethical doctor confronts the sales girl. And that's a very, very, very powerful moment. Yeah. Because that, the ethical doctor who knows everything about opiates is essentially explaining to this very young girl, just a beautiful sales girl, yeah. that you're selling heroin. You, it, this is heroin. It's indistinguishable to the body. It, it's, her, it's heroin. It's just you're calling it a different thing. And this idea that it's only 1% of the people have problems with it is – those numbers are all lies. All they're, lies. O- they're always lies. They lie about how many people died. They lie about how many people get addicted. It's all a lie. And th- if they can keep lying and not face any repercussions, they'll keep lying because that's th- – they almost have an obligation to their shareholders to do, to do that. Yeah, and in this case, they didn't even have shareholders. It was, yeah. it was a private it's company. Crazy. Uh, the uh, Richard Sackler and his his uncles were making all the money. They completely lied. I mean, they were doctors, and they yeah. knew how powerful the the opioid dosage was. They and they knew there were. And, and what else is crazy is they knew that if they just kept, they they would make so much more money by what they call titrating up. Right. So, you know, we put you on 10 milligrams of Oxycontin because you're you blew out your back in the gym and it works for a bit. And then when it doesn't, we're like, oh, well, we just got to we got to we got to kick you up. Yeah. So let's put you on 20 and then let's put you on 40. And they got up to 85 milligram Oxycontins. They call them Oxycoffins. That was in the word on the street. And these these reps these cute little reps these pretty little college gra- you know graduates who were just looking to make some money were paid based uh, bonuses based on the amount of milligrams in the pill so that i'm i'm trying to convince you if if i'm a rep and, and you're a doctor just to kick it up doc prescribe 20 or 40 or 85 milligrams and everybody will make some more money and that was the game that the sacklers were playing and like, 
you know, I've said like, I'm I'm down with capitalism, no problem. Like, make money, do it. And if if you just look at the Sacklers, you know, from a capitalistic perspective, and you apply, you know, uh, rules of capitalism, and you're on their grade, they get an A plus. They were fucking good at making money. You put like that much morality into the equation, and these are some evil human beings. It's unquestionably evil. And what's even more evil is they got away with it. They paid off. They had to give away a, a certain amount of money. I think it's six billion. See if we could find the settlement. Six, a little bit around six. And bec- now they can't be prosecuted. So they essentially bought their way out of going to jail for directly being responsible for the deaths of how many people? Right. Hundreds of thousands. So it was in a, the most bizarre coincidence I've ever experienced in, in the, my years of being in the business. The day Painkiller came out, the Supreme Court paused that decision. Have you heard this? No. It's a, it's a fascinating story. You should read about this. The day we came out was about twelve days ago. Now, the Supreme Court said, "Hold up, you 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 cannot cut a deal." Wow. Supreme yeah, there it is. Court blocks Purdue Pharma's six billion dollars Sackler opioid settlement. The justices will examine if bankruptcy court can force claimants to sign away their legal rights in a settlement. So let me break it down quick because this is actually fascinating for anyone who's paying attention. The deal that they cut, per, Purdue cut, was six billion dollars. We're going to pay six billion dollars to all the victims of OxyContin, but we're going to do that over the next two decades. We'll, we're going to parcel it out. And the Sacklers have maybe 15 bill in the bank, give or take. So they, they're just counting on interest rates to pay that six billion. And the deal they had cut said, we'll pay you the six, but you can never, there's no more. And you can never come after any more of our money and you can never come after us for any criminal charges. So they were basically buying their way to safety for six bill. And they, that deal was taken. The Supreme Court just said, hold up. Not so fast. We're not going to accept that deal. You may have to pay more, and we may go after you. So now the potential for them to face true bankruptcy and maybe more is on the table. How accurate do we know? Like some of the, I know you, this is a docudrama, right? Mm-hmm. Is that what, how you would describe it? Sure. Or based on a real life, real life events. Yes. But some of the things that he that Sackler said. In both the, the older Sackler and the younger Sackler, Richard and what was his dad's name? Um, Arthur. Arthur. His but, uncle. Yeah, the, well, his uncle, sorry. Both of those, the, the statements, they're, they're so horrific. 